So throughout Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re, there's a good handful of quote-unquote secret abilities that get played rather often, but Ishida never really took the time to explain these abilities or even explore them to any extent, uh, ultimately just leaving the idea of these abilities up in the open and for us as readers to kind of attach them to these characters and the possibilities of these abilities in our own regard. So there's three characters that I specifically want to talk about, uh, Uta, Donato, and Tata. These three characters, uh, for me, have some of the more unique abilities that aren't kind of attached to the Kagane or the full Kagaja, half Kagaja situation. Uh, instead, these are kind of separate entities uh, to an extent, at least with Donato and Uta's situation. However, Tartara has an elemental ability, which I believe throughout the entirety of the story is the only flame element we ever get to see. So I think it's good to start with Tartara, uh, just because throughout the story, the kind of consensus of elemental abilities is kind of played upon but never necessarily explained. The characters that we get to see with these abilities, at least off the top of my head for the importance factor, is Renji Yomo and a bit of Toka. These two characters have some sort of electrical ability uh, but then in enters Tartara and he kind of changes the situation entirely. He has this flame ability which I don't think he utilized to the fullest extent, uh, at least in his fight where he was kind of in his full Kagaja. Do note that that is also the first time we've ever seen an elemental ability attached to a full Kagaja as well, uh, but yet he still kind of got bodied by Takizawa. So the question is, even though this flame elemental ability is rather prominent and kind of attached to Tartara to a certain extent and he uses it, it's actually rather dangerous. For some reason, it's not an overarching ability that completely wipes opponents, at least in Tartara's case. However, with Renji Yomo, he basically basically relies on that ability uh, in every single encounter that he faces and the reason why he wins some of the biggest battles that he does is because of that ability. That's not to downplay Renji Yomo, it's just the fact that Ishida used that ability for him way too heavily without any explanation really. So where does the flame ability come from? Where does the elemental abilities come from in general? For the most part, I think a lot of these abilities I can only realistically try and connect to the heritage uh, of ghoul genetics basically. This was something that wasn't really explored all too much. The ideas of uh, certain families and certain bloodlines of ghouls having specific abilities and specific nuances, etc, etc, was rather interesting. It was subtly played upon, but I can only kind of imagine that that is the only reason why specific ghouls have specific elemental abilities. Hence the Renji Yomo and Toka situation, obviously they are related, uh, so they kind of share that same elemental ability to some extent. Toka's is not as powerful and even the same family tree don't necessarily have that elemental ability either so I guess it's more so a situational thing doesn't mean every single character or person in that family is going to have that set ability but I believe that is more so the only situation I can think of with Tartara if you were to think of it the other way like Tartara kind of learnt how to use it or he you know it was something that he acquired by practice or Kagane manipulation or blood manipulation or whatever you would think a lot more characters that are a lot more powerful powerful than Tartara would ultimately have that same thing, or a different variation of the elemental ability, but they do not. I kind of attach Tartara's flame element uh, to his bloodline and specifically to him, as he was quite a very interesting ghoul. His full Kagaja wasn't kind of like anything we've ever seen before. It definitely was a step in a new direction, obviously attaching that flame element to his full Kagaja, I should say, expanding on it from there. Like I said before, it didn't necessarily give him, you know, a, an up a ground or anything like that, but it was a kind of overlooming threat. With that said, as Tantra for me is kind of like the pinnacle of elemental users, uh, as his was the most interesting and the most unique compared to Renji and Toka, the other two characters are a little bit different. Uh, Donato and Uta are kind of on the same nature. I'm going to save Uta for last because for me, he is the most interesting character with the more specific details of abilities. So starting off with Donato, he was able to create clones of himself using his body parts. I actually find this extremely impressive because I imagine
imagine this is something that is probably learnt to an extent, but also some sort of a bit of a bloodline there. In some way, shape or form, it is Kagane manipulation to a very, very refined degree. But if you notice, a lot of these abilities, to an extent, uh, are not necessarily just there for the sake of them being there. Uh, they're actually wrapped into the character's kind of psychological aspect, which a lot of the abilities in Tokyo Ghoul are, and the same goes with Donato and Uta. Tartar is a little bit different because we didn't really know much about his character, but for Donato and Uta, most definitely. We've seen a very good showcase of Donato's kind of prowess with that ability. He was able to obviously perfectly manipulate himself and create a clone of himself, and that clone was able to not only speak and uh, interact with other characters and move on its own regard, but also use Donato's Kagane. I find that aspect extremely interesting because that kind of takes the clone to a next level. You know, a clone can uh, range from a lot of different things. You know, a baseless body that just kind of manipulates people to make you think that that body's there, to make you think there's more of you than there really is. But when that clone can actually physically harm you to a pretty decent extent, that's when things get pretty serious. Donato definitely didn't hold back in that Yuri showcase. The fact that it only cost him basically a finger to produce is extremely out of this world. Like I said, it definitely shows uh, Donato's prowl less and his hunger uh, with his Kagane usage and the fact that he's able to create most likely a good amount of clones to a very powerful degree. It's something that shapes his character rather well and suits his character rather well. He used this a couple of different times. He also had the ability to control people um, or at least control ghouls to a certain extent uh, and that was in the form of Eto Yoshimura that was completely framed out or ghouled out or whatever you want to call that monstrosity of a being at the end. Uh, specifically, uh, Donato was controlling her using a portion of his Kagane, not only creating clones and being able to control those clones independently and cause damage and harm, but also being able to control a very powerful ghoul, Eto Yoshimura. And last but not least, we have Uta. For me, he is one of the most interesting characters throughout the entirety of the story. His abilities, his nature, his kind of allegiance, what he's trying to achieve, everything was shrouded in mystery the entire time right up until the end. And it's kind of what made his character thrive. He was unexpectedly extremely powerful. He had a lot of interesting and unique abilities and just his overarching shadow was a, a pretty big deal. He kind of marked masqueraded uh, a very big portion of this story and mystery and it suited him entirely. On top of that, Ishida gave him a very, very unique ability. It's probably more prominent with Uta than Donato as we kind of get to see it more with Uta and it's, it fits heavily uh, with his character. So Uta has a, a couple of different variations of his ability. Uh, basically, he can perfectly mimic and create a mask of someone else's face on top top of mimicking their voice box. On top of that, it was heavily implied that he could apply this mask and this voice uh, to characters and control them by using the mask. Uh, kind of very similar in nature to how Donato controls uh, most likely his clones and other people, uh, Uto could ultimately do the same thing and on a supposedly a rather massive scale to also a very scary extent. Being able to perfectly mimic someone's face and someone's voice is top tier manipulation, which is right up uh, obviously Uta's alley as he is someone that kind of creates masks, but also he himself is extremely faceless. We never really know his agenda, his morality, his ideologies, what he's trying to do, how powerful he is, whose side is he on. There's so many mysteries surrounding his character and his ability suits it perfectly. I think Donato and Uta kind of share similarities in terms of their abilities as it's most likely Kagane manipulation at its finest to you know, some top tier uh, honing of their skills. Uh, most likely something they were born with as well. I don't think it was anything that they realistically acquired, uh, but they had this kind of innate ability to perfectly mimic people or create clones in Donato's case. And it's something that kind of flourished from there. Like I said, it suits their personality perfectly. And at least in Uta's case, it was heavily kind of portrayed throughout the story in multiple different occasions. It also adds this element of uneasiness to the story as kind of when you're reading, you don't know what side Uta is on. And when you find out that he has the ability to, you know, perfectly mimic people's faces and voices, the interaction between certain characters would ultimately 
suddenly be thrown up in the air and you would start to question these interactions because maybe for some reason Uta is on one side of these faces. You don't really know. Like I said, adds this uneasiness to the whole kind of narrative. And I think that was rather a beautiful thing for his character to kind of gesture his way into the story and kind of keep him a prominent figure when we rarely seen him. Atop of all of these abilities being crazily unique, there's never really any backbone or backstory to them on how they were acquired or obtained. Uh, realistically, the only answers that I can give is one, they were born with it, so it kind of comes into terms with ghoul genetics and how some ghoul families and bloodlines have these uh, abilities or situations or scenarios that are very unique to their bloodline, may evidently explain why some of these characters have these abilities. On the other side of things, it may not be blood related at all, and considering a lot of the ghoul-like abilities kind of relay back into a character's personality and traits, it would make a lot of sense for, you know, a lot of these characters to have some of these abilities, especially Uta. But it's not like it just kind of randomly activates. It still takes a while to kind of hone in this skill and use it perfectly every single time. To kind of end off the conversation, the only other thing that I can kind of really think of is that this is kind of just the fantasy element to the story. Uh, Ishida never really explored these abilities all too much. He made them a very prominent feature of the story, made a lot of characters rely on these abilities, but he never went through the trouble of explaining them or where they came from or how uh, these characters acquired it or what are even are the semantics of these abilities. So in that aspect, it could be just fantasy. It's just uh, another kind of ability Ishida wanted to wrap into the story to kind of freshen things up and uh, give characters a bit more spiciness, etc, etc. And that's not entirely too bad, except in a lot of situations, because we don't know the semantics, because we never really got any explanation, a lot of the ability usage falls extremely flat. Kind of comes off as an arse pull uh, in certain different occasions, uh, especially in in my personal opinion, Renji Yomo, as it was ability he heavily relied on in every single fight that basically he went through. He is a powerful character, but that ability definitely outshined his character, and unfortunately, it just didn't sit well with me. So, with that being said, that's basically it. How do you guys feel about these abilities? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you feel like Ishida should have left them out completely because ultimately he could have written the entirety of Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re without these abilities and the story would have been identical. There just would have been some uh, more interesting interactions. For example, Renji Yomo versus Uta at the end would have been much more interesting if Renji didn't rely on that lightning ability, which he always does. So let me know how you feel about it. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.